Hi guys, so let's now take a look at dynamic efficiency. It's really important to understand these efficiencies brilliantly well, so let's take a good look at what we've got here. Now, this involves the reinvestment of supernormal profits into research and development and new capital investments. And this will help to improve a business's future competitive advantage. Now, it's likely to do this in two main ways. Firstly, through non-price competition, and secondly, through price-based competition by reducing future long-run average cost. Uh, so if you're able to reduce your long-run average cost in the future, then that means you can offer lower prices, of course, to your consumers, and of course, that could be really good news. So let's now take a look at uh, the key condition that we need to fulfill for this to actually happen here. And that is, I've just drawn out a monopoly-based diagram here. Uh, so we can see where MC equals MR. Uh, at this point, we know that this is our profit-maximizing level of output. We can see that we've got to reinvest these supernormal profits, of course. So that's so important, absolutely key, uh, that you are clear on that. Now, this firm is achieving supernormal profits, and we can see that there. Uh, now, look at where the average revenue uh, is greater than the average cost, and we can therefore see that this entire area here would represent the supernormal profits of this given firm. Now, this is not to say, of course, that this firm would necessarily be dynamically efficient. What that requires is them to actually reinvest this money into... Uh, research and development and new capital investments. So capital investments could involve expanding the operation. It could involve better technology that is actually utilized in terms of actually producing output. So there's a number of significant areas that this could be used to help generate that competitive advantage through non-price competition or through price-based competition. Uh, so there we go. We can see average revenue is greater than average cost at this point, and that fulfills that key condition of uh, super normal profits. We just need that firm to make sure that they use that profit wisely. They don't just distribute it to their shareholders and dividend payments and so on. Right, uh, the impact. Okay, well, first up, it may well mean for consumers, if they're getting a better product in the future because of this non-price competition, there may be increased uh, consumer surplus. Moreover, if there's a reduction in long run average costs and prices then fall, that would also help to actually fulfill that condition. So there may be lower future prices for the good. It depends. If you think about Apple, well, of course, they rarely will provide lower prices to consumers, but other businesses such as Google really does pride themselves on giving access to uh, various resources for free. And so does, of course, Facebook there. Uh, now, We've also got the fact that there's likely to be increased product differentiation or heterogeneous products. So the firms are going to work to develop their unique sales uh, proposition and improve their non-price competitive uh, advantage. Uh, there may be, as we said, lower unit costs. Okay, um, that's not always true. It depends on the business's own market position. Uh, and that's, that's really key to just understand the market within which they operate. So if they're a food-based uh, business uh, where they're working in a very, very price-sensitive market, then of course that needs to be a key focus. Yeah, if they are working in desirable consumer technology like Apple, well, it's about that product differentiation, of course. So just make sure you're clear on that. Uh, Anyway, the overall result of using this profit more productively in the future will help to actually improve a, a, a business's competitive advantage. Now, if you did want to understand and interpret the impact in another way, what you could also consider is the long run average cost curve being reduced by the business because it utilizes more efficient capabilities, uh, which help to actually manage the supply chain in a better way, perhaps, and therefore reduce product wastage of perhaps perishable goods. And therefore, the long run average cost curve of 2018 may be higher than the long run average cost curve which is attainable in 2020. So a firm that's dynamically efficient may end up doing this, but 
once again, it does depend on that company's market position. So are they competing on price or are they competing on product differentiation and non-price competition? Okay, guys, that's been super. Hope you've enjoyed it. See you next time.